Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing whether or not you should bring your house plants outdoors for the summer. So this is really common question for anyone residing in a cold climate whether that be in somewhere in Europe, Canada, or the Northern US. And the reason why it's such a popular question is because plants tend to not do very well over time indoors. And the best way to give them a little bit of a kick in the butt to grow is by bringing them outside. So in this video, we're gonna explore how to select a candidate for the great outdoors and then some words of warning that you may want to consider before placing your plant outdoors and just general overall care. So let's jump right into it. So I've had house plants arguably longer than I've had a garden, mostly because I've been into plants my entire life. And prior to having a garden of my own, I had house plants. And so I've been bringing my house plants outside for many, many, many moons. But with that being said, I've learned some tricks of the trade when it comes to selecting what plants go outside and which ones do not. And the best way to determine this is actually by leaf texture and then your heart. <laughs> so those are the two number one ways to select what goes outdoors and what does not. So great candidates for the great outdoors would include snake plants, that is my aloe vera, snake plants such as these ones here, and then my aloe vera would also be a great idea. You can also do Hoyas, um, Deffenbachias. What I wouldn't suggest doing is anything tree-like or tall. And the reason for this is because wind can damage the plant. Now, if you're able to put it in a sheltered area, then go ahead, that is fine. The other thing to look out for is if it's near and dear to your heart, don't bring it outside. Things like wind, rain, torrential downpour and rain, hail, cold nights, bugs will all potentially take a toll on your plant. So for example, Hoyas, I like to put them outdoors because they tend to flower and they tend to take off. Now, I wouldn't put all Hoyas outside. And the reason for that is because things like mealybugs or just bugs, spider mites, things like that, will tend to find a home in your plant, which you will then bring indoors. But that leads me into the second point. Whenever you bring any of your plants outside and then bring them inside in the fall, I heavily suggest grabbing a bottle of predatory nematodes and giving every single one of those pots a shot because you will bring bugs inside. Despite the fact that you don't see them on the outside of the plant, they do, the bugs will reside in the soil. So regardless of how hard you try, the eggs are coming inside and that's why you tend to see a little bit of a bug explosion about two to three months after bringing them indoors. I would say probably October, November is when you start noticing things like the fungus gnats and the spider mites and the mealy bugs and the thrips. And that is because they were outside and those those laid eggs in your soil. So putting predatory nematodes in your soil are just going to completely eliminate that issue. So, so long as you have the predatory nematodes in your back pocket, pretty much any plant can go outside so long as you don't hold it near and dear to your heart. The key to bringing these guys outdoors is actually putting them in a space that is safe for about one to two weeks. And this is the process we like to call hardening off. So regardless of if it's an al it can be an aloe vera plant, a cacti, snake plant, whatever the case is, you need to make sure that you harden them off appropriately. So let's run some plants outside and I'll show you exactly what that entails. So this is a really great example of what hardening off looks like. I'm currently still in the shade despite it being an evening sun. These guys, despite being snake plants, which technically, as you know from my snake plant video, will be located in full sun very shortly, you're gonna to wanna to keep them here for about two weeks and let them adjust to the sunlight. But this is all it takes, literally just put them in a shaded zone. I like to wait till my nighttime temperatures are well above 10 degrees Celsius. 
15 degrees Celsius even better, which is where we're at right now. And I will now leave them outside for the rest of the summer and I will water them every single time I water any of my other plants. And the growth you're going to see is going to be explosive. Now, whether that be from the fact that it's a snake plant or a syngonium, Hoya, whatever the case is, bring them all out. They're all going to be just fine. Just don't bring your favorites out. Heaven forbid something horrific happens. But if you want rapid growth and you want that jungle look, then that is a great step to follow. So only thing you have to do is harden off for at least two weeks, put them in a shady spot that is sheltered for two weeks time frame. And then after that, you can move them into full sun or into shade, leave them in shade if they're still a shade plant water them like you would regularly any sort of plant and make sure your nighttime temperatures are well above 10 degrees celsius remember your house plants aren't cold tolerant so you want to make sure that temperatures in the wheelhouse of where you need it and well above the freezing temps there you guys have it i hope this motivates you guys to bring your plants outdoors it will make your winter time that much more wonderful because you will get some very explosive growth off of them. Honestly, I'm amazed by the end of the summer how some of my house plants look after being outdoors. But um, yeah, very, very simple stuff. The biggest thing is the bugs when you bring them indoors. If you do this, no if, ands, or buts, you want to grab those predatory nematodes to bring them indoors because the bugs will lay their eggs in your soil. Um, a great way around that would be diatomaceous earth sprinkled on top, maybe a rock or a sand layer on on the surface which will help as well but they still they tend to sneak their way in so nematodes is is the best method there i want to thank you guys so much for watching give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you bring your indoor plants out and whether or not you've enjoyed it or you've just found it to be an absolute hassle and nightmare i will talk to you guys next time bye